It's hard to make narrow filters at high frequencies. And the way that you typically overcome this is to use a lock-in amplifier. Many of you on this call or on the webinar will have come across lock-in amplifiers in the past. This is the only slide of maths in my entire uh, deck, so don't worry too much. The key observation is that if you remember from high school probably, if you take two sine waves and you multiply them together, you get two new sine waves out the other side. One of them is at the difference of the frequencies of the two that you multiply together, and one of them at the sum. You get sum and difference frequencies out. In particular, if you multiply your incoming sine wave by a sine wave at the frequency of interest, at the, the frequency that you're trying to measure, then the difference of a frequency and that same frequency is zero. So you end up with a term that is DC, it has no frequency on the left, and you have another term which is at the sum of their frequencies, or, or 2f, 2 omega t in this notation, on the right. It is usually quite easy for you to build a filter that can discriminate between something at DC and something at 2f, something at twice the frequency. Hopefully your uh, frequency of interest is high enough that twice that is, is much higher and you can very easily separate these two things out. So a lock-in amplifier is designed to filter out this harmonic, the second harmonic. Um, and then all you're left with is your, your measurement, your, your frequency of interest shifted down to DC, sort of. So what you're actually left with is not just phase, not phi, but cos phi. And it's a bit worse than that because you've actually got r cos phi, where r is the magnitude or the size of your in incoming sine wave. So you have this one term, r cos phi, or it can be r sine phi, phase is kind of arbitrary, right? But the point here is that you've got this one term that has a trigonometric function of phase, not phase itself, and it has the amplitude kind of knotted up in that as well. Still, that simple operation of multiplying two things together and then filtering out the second harmonic is the basis of a simple single phase lock-in amplifier. And you can do this in the Moku. This is a screenshot of uh, the Moku's lock-in amplifier in its single phase mode down the bottom there. You can do better though. If you multiply not just by a sine wave, but actually a sine and a cosine, then out the other side you get r sine phi and r cos phi. And because you've then got two measurements that have r and phi in them, you can compute the amplitude and the phase independently of each other. This is called a dual phase lock-in amplifier, and it means that you can both recover phase, not just cos phi but, or sine phi, but actually just phi, the phase, and you can recover the amplitude of your signal, and those two things are basically independent of each other. As I say, this is called dual phase lock-in amplification, and of course you can do this on the MOCO as well.